Basically, I'm going to look at the sliding filament theory, and this is about understanding how a sliding filament works. So it's quite often part of the anatomy and physiology that people kind of get a little bit bogged down on, or they find it really hard to get their head wrapped around. And that's because it's quite abstract and quite flat. When you look at it in your manual, it doesn't really make sense. So I related it to a metaphor for you, and this metaphor today is the accordion theory. So if you don't know what an accordion is, it's time to brush up on your your folk music understanding. So um, really, the, an accordion, all you need to know about it is that it's a musical instrument. It makes a lot of different noises, but essentially it opens and closes. It kind of expands and contracts across this accordion length. So it changes in length. And this makes it a really good metaphor for us. So I want you to imagine for me that you've got many accordions all lined up end to end the whole way across and what happens with this is that they're going to literally condense down and then expand back up but they're not going to happen that's not going to happen individually they're all going to all do it at the same time which means that there is huge variation in length from all of them being contracted to all of them being expanded now, what on earth does this have to do with anatomy and physiology, you may well be asking me. Well, essentially, each accordion is just like a sarcomere. So if you imagine instead that each accordion is a sarcomere that is stacked end on end, back to back. That's all I need you to imagine for me for now. I'm going to look in more detail at what a sarcomere actually is. So a sarcomere is made up of both actin and myosin. Now an actin is the thin part of the of the of the sarcomere. These are the thin contractile proteins and you can see on my screen here that you've got these lines across, these horizontal lines. These are the thin elements. They're the uh, they're the actin. And a way of remembering this is that actin is thin. They both have a T in them, so they're thin. Now these basically need to join with the myosin and the myosin is the thick filaments you can see that look kind of like brushes or um, caterpillars on here, the centipede, little centipedes. Now these two contractile proteins join together to allow it to go from an expanded position that you can see here, that's the accordion expanded out, down to this contracted position here that you can see the, the accordion closed up. So Sarcomere is made up of actin and myosin. Myosin are the thick proteins, actin are the thin ones, and it just literally expands and contracts, expands and contracts. Now, what allows that to happen is what happens at the cross bridges. So a cross bridge is highlighted at the very top of this image, and you can see a little yellow dot there as well. On the little myosin heads, a, that's where ATP sits, and that's adenosine triphosphate. That's how we create, and that's our currency for energy. So we need this ATP to sit on the cross bridges between myosin and actin and allow that contraction to happen so that it can move itself further forward and allow that shortening of the sarcomere itself. So as that shortens, um, the ATP is being used. Now, that is fantastic, but it leaves along a load of dirtiness. It leaves all its waste products behind. And those waste products are um, may are cleared away by calcium. So calcium cleans out all of that waste from the myosin heads and allows that contraction to happen again. And that's the benefit of calcium itself. So I just want to explain a little bit more detail about where the, this sliding filament theory and where, how an accordion relates to a sarcomere and how that relates to actually a muscle contracting. So the things you need to know is an accordion is one sarcomere. You need to know that sarcomeres are packed with um, both actin where actin is the thin one and myosin is the thicker one. I remember this, an O is round, it's thicker than an I, which is thin. So actin and myosin. Now, have a look at this image here. Now, you may well have seen this image before. <laughs> it's probably uh, made you go a little bit grey, like mine has, um, or it's made you pull your hair out a little bit because you've seen it in your manual and it still doesn't make sense, no matter how many times you go through it. So I want to relate this to the accordion you've just learned about. Now the accordion sits here. End on end, each sarcomere is sitting 
in a muscle fiber. So each muscle fiber is made up of a long lines of accordions. And remember, the accordion is a sarcomere. Now, a muscle fiber is also called a myofibril. Now, this myofibril is then um, runs the whole lot length of the muscle. But in order to have real impact and be strong, it needs lots of those for every contraction. So every contraction, we get to choose how many muscle fibers we engage. And that means all those sarcomeres are all contracting end on end. But if we have a bundle of muscle fibers, it's called a fascicle. And if we have a bundle of fascicles, it's then the skeletal muscle. So you can imagine there is a lot of actinomycin, a lot of sarcomeres going on in every muscle contraction. Now, I want you to imagine this guy's arm here and imagine this, for example, is happening in his bicep. I know it's showing it down in the forearm, but let's imagine the bicep. Now, from there, um, imagine now that each of his actinomycin all contract and the accordions all get shorter all the way along. All of them get shorter. So each sarcomere gets shorter and shorter and shorter. Now, you can imagine the whole length of that and the strength of there being loads and loads of muscle fibers literally contract it. So as that contracts it and makes it all shorter, um, his, then his two muscles, uh, his two bones, i.e. his humerus and also his radius ulna, get closer together, which causes a contraction and, a, uh, and um, the joint closing, the elbow joint closing, which is his bicep curl. So essentially, what you need to know is that a sarcomere is the actin and myosin, and that's where the contractile proteins are. That's what's allowing the contraction to happen, and they need to happen end on end to have significant difference. So let's have a little quiz on this one. Um, this became one of the, the many quizzes that we had in the webinar itself. So what is a myofibril divided into across all of its length? Is it myosin, fascicle? actin or sarcomere so take a second just to work that one out and then pop your answer in the comments box below and we'll see how you get on if you got it wrong it really doesn't matter um it's about learning curve so if you get it wrong please don't worry please don't go in and change your answer it's okay but now that you've had chance to think about it, the answer is D, sarcomere. So a myofibril, remember, was the muscle fiber and the sarcomere was the accordions. And a myofibril is made up of lots and lots of accordions back to back, which allows that contraction to happen, allows that shortening of the muscle. So... Um, Essentially, throughout all of this um, webinar, I went through three really good um, analogies. We also done axis of movement and we also done hoji for member origins and insertions. Now, I will do two more small little bite sized videos like this so that you still get the benefits of being able to use them. Um, but the other part of the webinar was that I introduced the revision mastery series and I will pop a link below so you can find out all about the revision mastery series because we have an offer on and it's available until one o'clock on Sunday so that's one o'clock tomorrow and that's in London time so if you're anywhere else that's London time one o'clock tomorrow which is Sunday 2nd of April 2017 and it's usually 97 pound but at the moment you can get it for 37 pound on our website now, I'm up until one o'clock, we are reducing it down to 28, which gives you the insider price. That's what the guys on the inside of our academy portal can achieve it at. So it is at a lower price. Now, that link will be available below this video, so you're able to access it and to make the most of that discount. But if you have any questions about it, please do pop that in the comments below as well. And I'll do my best to answer you as quickly as I possibly can. Now, what's involved in this revision mastery series? Let's go through and have a little look and find the actual um, part so I can show you a little bit about it. So this is the page you'll get when you click on that link that will be in underneath the video. And in that, you'll notice that... Um, this little screenshot, and there are seven modules within your revision mastery for your anatomy and physiology. That includes, in each module, you'll have a cheat sheet, and that allows you to be quizzed on the video. And the video itself is over an hour for each subject. So you get a lot of content rather than little bite-sized lesson like I've just gone through with you. 
Um, you'll get a cheat sheet. You'll also get MP3 and MP4 download. So you can literally click that button and it will allow you to download it straight to MP3 and MP4. Save it to your phone, your laptop, your tablet, whatever it might be. And then you can access it when you're out and about, when you're um, going to the gym, when you're going for a walk, when you're driving. And it allows you to have the the repetition of going over and over those lessons and that really allows you to learn a lot better so um, what we do in relation to the structure but you've got seven video modules and these are all modules are covered here so you've got heart and circulatory musculoskeletal muscle locations posture and core nervous system endocrine and energy systems as well and there's a lot of bonus videos in there as well. So like I said, if you click onto that link, you'll be able to find out all of this information as well. Um, but we do get some really amazing uh, testimonials and feedback from this on people that it's really helped them pass their exams first time. And that's because we break it down into metaphors like you just saw with the accordion here on this video um, and all the different imagery and easy to use language because at the end of the day, you can't learn something if it's in a totally different language that you're used to using. So that's what we're renowned for here at Parallel is putting it in language that you actually understand. Now, if you have any questions about this or about the muscle little uh, bite-sized lesson I just gave you in relation to sliding filament theory, then please do pop your comment below and I will do my best to answer it as soon as I possibly can. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. If you've not already subscribed, subscribed to our YouTube channel, do that now as well. And you'll get more of these live ones as and when I do them, which I will try and do them more and more regularly for you. Um, I hope you have a fantastic day and also best of luck with your exam. So good luck with your exam and I look forward to speaking to you soon. I'll pop a little link in the comments box now. Take care.